welcome back to my kitchen. If you're new here, I'm Kinsley Wirtz. Welcome today. We are going to be making some Thanksgiving desserts. We're going out to Kansas for Thanksgiving to be with Keegan's family and I'm going to be bringing some desserts and I decided to kind of take a little bit more of a less traditional route but still keep it pretty fall themed. So I have two recipes pinned on Pinterest. Never made either of these so we're in this together. I'm a little bit nervous honestly. The first thing that I'm going to make is a pumpkin custard pie with a ginger snap crust. I feel like my success rate on making pies is like 50-50. Sometimes they turn out really great and other times not so much, but for the most part they end up at least tasting good. So I'm hoping that this one turns out. The other recipe is going to be an apple cider whoopie pie. I've never made whoopie pies before and these look so good so fun. It's kind of like a drizzly cool day here in Ohio so it feels like perfect weather to just stay in, do some baking. So the first thing that I'm going to make is the pie. So let's get started. Okay so I'm going to mix my crust together in this food processor but the things that you're going to need are gingerbread cookies, I was shopping at Aldi today and I could not find any gingerbread cookies and I finally did stumble upon these but they are like iced gingerbread cookies and that's definitely not quite what I was going for. I was hoping for more of like a Biscoff cracker but I also didn't feel like going to another grocery store. So we're just gonna do the iced ones and they're a little softer which is why I had to do a food processor instead of a like crushing them in a bag. But the other ingredients are going to be some melted butter, ginger, and sugar. I decided to do a little bit less sugar than it called for just because I have icing on these and I didn't want the crust to end up being sweeter than it was supposed to be. So I'm just going to blend up these cookies and I'm supposed to end up with two cups. So I'll just go ahead and blend this bag and see how much I end up with. All right, now that we have our dough mixture ready, all that we're gonna do is press it into the pie pan. I'm hoping that this goes well. I'm not sure how well this is going to form. Okay, that actually wasn't like super difficult. It just kind of took some time molding it and getting it all around. I don't know if it's supposed to like cover the outside of the pie pan, but I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to get that far. So we'll just kind of leave it like this. So now we are going to pop it in the oven and bake it for about 10 minutes. Okay, while the crust is baking, I'm just going to go ahead and get started on my custard filling. So I'm going to beat together two eggs and then we're adding cinnamon, allspice, and ginger along with salt and sugar. Okay guys, I just took my crust out of the oven and has sunken down and it feels like really soft. Almost like it has way too much butter and I kind of feel like maybe I shouldn't have put as much in as I did. Yeah, I'm kind of not sure what I'm gonna do about this crust. So, just wanted to give you guys an update and kind of keep it real here. So, let me see if I feel like it's something that I can kind of work with or not. <laughs> Okay, after doing a little bit of research, I think I realized what my problem was. So, turns out this kind of crust can be a little bit persnickety, and I really needed to use more of a dry, like, 
crackery cookie probably more like the biscoff or whatever and so mine had a little bit more moisture in them and they were more soft and then in the recipe it also says just you don't have to use all of the butter but I just kind of was like well I didn't know and I just added all of the butter so I think that kind of created this like greasy wet mess that I have going on here I really just feel like this is not salvageable <laughs> So I kind of considered trying to work with it and like maybe adding flour to it and making it more, I guess, dry and kind of like a cross between a regular pie crust and a gingerbread pie crust. I really want to try that, but I don't think it's very smart. For one, it's already baked a little bit, so it might already be kind of overcooked. And I just feel like it's kind of a risk so I might be a little bit safer to just make a regular pie crust and we'll still have kind of a fun pumpkin pie because it's like more of a custardy pumpkin pie I guess that's what the recipe said I've never actually made real pumpkin pie so this might be very similar so we're kind of troubleshooting a little bit we're gonna kind of rearrange our plans throw this out I'm kind of sad because I really liked the idea of having a gingerbread crust and just like that flavor that that would add but it's okay I will just go ahead and make a regular pie crust and then we'll get back to the pumpkin pie all right so I am now currently making just like a regular pie crust I really like the recipe from the hopes table cookbook honestly I would recommend this cookbook a lot it has lots of great recipes but I'm just making her pie crust. But I just like couldn't give up on the idea of like gingerbread or like a spicy pie crust. And I don't know if this is like super dumb of me. But I went ahead and added a little bit of ginger and a little bit of cinnamon and a little bit of sugar as well. Just because I want this crust to be a little bit sweeter. I didn't really add that much sugar. I don't know if it'll make a huge difference. This recipe doesn't have any sugar in it. Just because the ginger snap crust was going to be pretty sweet. I don't know. I just, I wanted it to be a little bit of a sweeter crust. So I don't know if this is going to be weird, but we're going to give it a try. So I'm going to go ahead and make the pie crust and then I will catch up with you guys. Okay. I'm back and we have our pie crust ready. That honestly went pretty well. I'm hoping it bakes well. I'm going to try putting aluminum foil around it to help from the sides going down because I've had a problem with that before. So I'm going to do that and then I'm gonna pop it in the oven for it to kind of start baking and I'll finish with my pumpkin pie filling. Okay, so we are moving back to our pumpkin pie. So I'm just going to add in a little bit of evaporated milk, one can, and then instead of doing a can of pumpkin, I just have some already made butternut squash puree that I made a couple weeks back. So I'm just gonna turn the mixer on and start adding. Okay, I just pulled the pie crust out of the oven. It's not completely done baking. What I actually did is something called blind baking where I kind of just gave my pie crust a little bit of a head start. It is gonna be in the oven for quite a while baking the pumpkin pie. So I didn't want it to be completely cooked so it didn't get like too brown or whatever. I also didn't want it to be a raw pie crust because I read that that can get soggy. So just something I did. Um, and now I'm going to pour in the the pumpkin pie filling. I really was not expecting it to be so liquidy. I'll show you in just a minute, but I've also never made pumpkin pie before. So I think this is actually the normal consistency, but it did kind of catch me off guard. Okay, it looks like I have a little bit of an overflow right there, which makes me a little bit nervous, but yeah, my pie crust didn't turn out completely even. I'm definitely still an amateur at this, but what I'm hoping for is a good tasting pie. All right, they're in the oven. They're gonna be in there for 40 minutes on 350, and then we'll turn it down a little bit and let it continue baking. But while they're in the oven, I'm going to clean up, and then we will get started on the apple cider whoopie pies. Okay, 
So the first thing that we're actually gonna do is boil down about one cup of apple cider to like a fourth a cup. I'm not sure how easy it's going to be to like tell. We'll just kind of eyeball it and then I'll probably just measure out one fourth a cup of whatever I have left. So we're gonna let that start boiling and then we'll move on to our batter. Also, I definitely also poured myself a glass of apple cider because this is one of the best things about fall. Look who just got home from work. <laughs> it's Keegan. It's me. And he's gonna help me with the rest of the baking. I, it's so hard to film because you're so much taller than me. Yeah. But um, he's gonna help film, help bake. So it's gonna be a good time. All right, so our first step for the batter is sifting together our dry ingredients. So we're doing one and three-fourths cup of flour. We will do a half a teaspoon of salt. We're also going to add cinnamon, ginger, and nutmeg into our little dry mixture here. All right, and then in our mixer, I'm just gonna cream together my butter and sugar. And now I'm just gonna add a little bit of vanilla and a couple of eggs. Can you do it one-handed? Yeah. That's a professional. All right, and we mix it up. Just a little update on the pie. It came out of the oven looking delish. Okay, so now I'm going to add my apple cider and a little bit of apple butter. Said you could use apple butter or apple sauce, and I had some apple butter that I could use up, so that's what I'm using. Now I'm just going to put this on low heat and add the dry ingredients. All right, now that our batter is made, the next step is just going to be scooping them out into like little cookies and throwing them in the oven. All right, so Keegan and I actually have some evening plans tonight, and I definitely wanna spend more time on these, and I don't wanna be rushing it, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish everything at a later time. I'm going to finish baking them tonight, but we will do the rest a little bit later. So I will see you guys then. All right, I am back. It is a different day, a different outfit, and we are ready to finish. I'm gonna go ahead and get started on the frosting. Now this recipe has a couple different frosting options and they all sounded amazing. There was a bourbon caramel buttercream and a brown sugar cream cheese icing. Both sound absolutely delicious. I decided to go with the brown sugar cream cheese icing just because I love cream cheese icings, especially on like fall and more spicy desserts. So that is what I decided to go with. The ingredients that you need for that is of course cream cheese, butter, powdered sugar, vanilla, and brown sugar. Okay, so I have all of my cookies set out right here and I'm just going to brush them with a little bit of melted butter and then sprinkle them with cinnamon and sugar on top and then we can get to making like little sandwiches out. Does anybody else have this problem of always making too much cinnamon and sugar? I thought I needed this much and I was like intentionally thinking, there, you always have too much cinnamon and sugar. I don't wanna make too much, so I'm not gonna make very much. And I have this much left over. Why is that always a problem? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, and I don't have a lot of very good icing material, so this could end up being a little bit messy, but I've just put it in this little bag and cut a little tip on, and we will just pipe the inside of these and make little sandwiches. Okay, look at that. I literally want to try one so bad, but I'm holding off because I already feel like I don't quite have enough, so I want to have plenty. You know, I don't want to have any less than I already do for Thanksgiving. So unfortunately, we are not going to be able to taste test anything that uh, I've made, very sadly, because I'm very anxious to try. But over on my Instagram on Thanksgiving day, Keegan and I will do a little taste test we will rate each of the desserts one out of 10. So follow me there if you haven't already to uh, get the results, but these look amazing. I'm super excited to try. That is going to be it for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already and leave a comment if you wish. And I will see you guys next time. Have a happy Thanksgiving.